Welcome to the Big Change the Film interview series. My name is Jason Cohen. I personally have lost over 120 pounds, and my goal is to chat with people weekly who've also lost significant amounts of weight, share their stories, and pass along some of that inspiration to others. Including today's guest and myself, the total pounds lost is now up to 9,584 pounds. Today's guest is Alexis Fox from Boston. Alexis told me that she grew up eating the standard American diet, but in their 20s and 30s, she began to care about the animals, the environment, and in turn, started changing what she was putting into her body. She, in the years to come, lost 45 pounds, and now in her 30s, says she's thinner than she was in her 20s. We have a great conversation, and I hope that you enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching. I'm here with Alexis Fox. Uh, she and I got connected actually at Plant Stock a few weeks ago and started chatting about projects she's working on. She's lost some weight herself. And so first off, Alexis, we uh, could just start off with a little bit about yourself and uh, where you're from. Sure. Uh, I grew up in New York, about an hour north of the city. And uh, I now live in Boston. So I'm in Cambridge, Massachusetts specifically. It's a great place to be. Uh, so that's where I'm from. And then right now I am the Chief Empowerment Officer at Liger. That's awesome. Well, I want to get into uh, a little bit about lighter, but um, you know, part of the reason we're talking is because I believe you lost some weight. How much yeah. have you lost so far? So I lost 45 pounds quite a while ago now. It's probably been maybe six years, seven years of, since I lost the weight. Um, but I was definitely a lot heavier than I am today, which is awesome. Yeah, and you're a, you're a petite gal. You're not, you know, you're not six foot five or anything like that. You know, so I can imagine forty five pounds is pretty significant for you. Yeah, it was. I mean, I don't, I don't want to um, say that my old self was, you know, too different than probably a lot of overweight um, women who are out there in the world living in the U.S. right now. But it was significant, and it's nice to. Um, be rid of it and feel a lot more fit and healthy um, today. And and to be amazed that at 36, you know, I'm I'm tinier than I was when I was, you know, 24. It's yeah. Kind of so so where did where did the weight kind of come on for you? Was it something that you had always had, you know, growing up as a as a younger adult? Yeah. So um, I growing up, I ate standard American diet um, and so, like a lot of people, as you become a teenager, um, if you're eating the standard American diet, you end up putting on some weight. I think eating for me was always also a little bit, I almost want to say political, although that's kind of a strange way to put it. But in high school, I was somewhat rebellious against the idea that I should look a certain way. Um, I had been studying eating disorders as a part of a psychology class in high school and kind of in a twist of fate said, okay, well, I don't want anyone to tell me that I should be skinny and look like a Barbie, so I'm going to eat whatever I want, but then I ended up being heavy and then unhappy that I was heavy. Um, so it was a combination of just eating standard American diet and then having a little attitude of, I don't give a what. <laughs> And then how long, you know, looking back, how long did that extra weight kind of carry with you? Yeah, so um, I, there were a couple other pieces of it. I had been a swimmer in high school, and then I started my high school's debate team like a boss um, and stopped exercising as much. So it was really my junior and senior year of high school where I was pretty heavy. Um, and, then, and then going into college, um, most people, you know, gain the freshman 15, but I was really lucky. I was an environmental studies major, and I was learning about factory farming and industrial animal agriculture and started to realize that it's very bad for the planet um, and also started to think about the animals that were inside those buildings. And so um, I decided to go vegan. And so I went vegan when I was, I, I remember very clearly my first day going vegan. And just to give you a sense of like the type of foods that I thought were, it was okay to eat. My first day going vegan, um, I walked into my friends and I said, I'm going to try this. And I made a peanut butter and fluff bagel. <laughs> that was what I decided. 
decided it was like a healthy vegan meal. <laughs> that's amazing. And then uh, that's what I eat. And then somebody, I took a few bites and someone told me fluff wasn't vegan, which actually it is. That wasn't true. But so then I put that aside and then went and made something else. But I had never, I hadn't eaten healthy, but just because I naturally wanted to not participate in factory farming because I didn't want to contribute to the sustainability issues that I saw with it, weight just started to slowly fall off, even though I wasn't really trying to do that. I still a little bit had that attitude of, I don't care what I look like. <laughs> Um, and so it, it just naturally started to come off as the years went on and, and I was able to lose 45 pounds. Um, but also because I started to get healthier and healthier in the way I thought about eating. I think one of the things that you start to learn about when you think about factory farming and industrial animal agriculture, for me, I thought first about um, the environment. So we were learning about how a industrial facility coming into a rural community decimates the air quality, decimates the water quality, um, and makes the, the neighbors around that facility sick. So it was the first thing I was thinking about. So that's the environmental piece. Then one day I was thinking about the water quality issue and realized that the reason we were talking about water quality was because of waste and that the waste was coming from animals inside the building. And then all of a sudden I realized that the same way that my dog woke up every single day and went to sleep every single night in our house, there were animals in those buildings, those buildings that were making the neighbors sick that were waking up every single day and going to sleep every single night in those warehouses. So then I cared about the animals and then I slowly started to lose the weight and started to realize that I was getting healthier and healthier and healthier. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, what's good for people is good for the environment and it's good for animals. What's good for the, our planet is good for people and it's good for animals. It's all connected. And so I'm guessing that you didn't lose 45 pounds by eating peanut butter and fluffer nutter uh, <laughs> <laughs> bagels. <laughs> What uh, you know? I can make a lot of money on the peanut butter and fluff diet. A lot of people would like to hear that. That's I was going to say, but and, no. I, and I think <laughs> prepackaged foods would be very easy with that. <laughs> don't please don't do that. <laughs> so no. How long? You know, because I'm. It sounds like, and I heard another interview with you that you know, like you were a, a ethical vegetarian, and you have been for a bit. What was that journey like? From you know, kind of that those almost those heart things changing for you and whatnot to the point at which, you know, you really started to eat foods that look more like, you know, real foods and whole foods and things like that. Yeah, so um, my, my college cafeteria, I will give them credit, had, had some really healthy foods. And um, so I started to experiment a little bit more. I like the salad bar. I mean, the issue with the salad bar for me is I would go through the salad bar and then I would put all of these cheese tortellinis in the salad and I would like pretend that I was not eating them because they were in a bed of lettuce, but you're still eating all of the cheese tortellinis. Like that's still actually happening in your body. Um, but I think once I, I gave up the, I couldn't give up the cheese tortellini. So I wasn't motivated to give up the cheese tortellinis to lose weight, but I was motivated to do it because I didn't want to participate in factory farming. And so, um, you, you once said to me when we were talking earlier about a positive thought train, which I, I absolutely love that term. I think it's amazing. I think once you, I started to drop weight just because it started to trigger this idea that I could do it, right? So before I hadn't, I just kind of accepted that I was going to be heavy and had taken on this attitude of I didn't care, um, which is not really true, right? Like, obviously I cared. But um once I started to see that it was possible, it was just small changes over time where my, A, my taste buds were changing. So I was starting to like the taste of vegetables more and more and more. And then it was education. It was starting to learn about um, how whole foods is better for your body, how um, vegetables um, 
can be made in a certain way to taste good. I think I had a roommate that was cooking a little bit more. But it did for me, to be honest, it went very slowly. So it wasn't like I lost 45 pounds um, in a year or something like that. For me, it just like, as opposed to every year you gain weight, it was like every year I just kept dropping weight. And in that way, I think it's very sustainable, at least for me, because it just naturally was falling out as I was becoming more and more educated and also just like letting my taste buds naturally shift. Yeah, it's interesting because I think a lot of people I talk to, they want to lose the weight. They want to lose it super fast. And mm-hmm. sometimes that can be met with a little bit of disappointment when you're not, when you, when you put the weight on over such a, sh- a long amount of time and people think, well, why can't I get it off in two weeks or, you know, a yeah. month or whatever? Um, had you tried to lose the weight before or, or was it kind of just a... Sure. I think I had done like, you know, the normal yo-yo dieting or um, kind of... I, I had some negative self-talk about it, but I, I also was super conscious of that negative self-talk because I had studied eating disorders. So I also um, have always tried to be really good to myself and, and make sure the language that I use when I'm thinking about myself and is, is positive. Um, and I, I'm really glad that I had that background to understand the risks. Um, of a lot of negative self-talk and, and that I was not motivated by that kind of a inner communication that it was for me, which is, I think different from a lot of people, it was more externally motivated. I want to make the world a better place. So I'm going to change the way I'm eating because I want my behavior to be reflective of the kind of world I want to see. And that to me, help me stick to it in a way that I think just as being about how I look did not did not motivate me quite as much um but then because it was being positively reinforced in my behavior change then I was able to have more of a conversation with myself about oh I could do this like this is possible Uh, my pants are too big all of a sudden so now I can you know keep going and then um and then for the last 10 pounds, I was pretty thoughtful about it. So, um, but that, that, so that got to probably four or five years later. So I'd lost probably 35 pounds. Um, I wanted to get down to a weight that, that I felt like I should be at. And so I started, I actually teamed up with a friend on that last 10 pounds. She, I think I gained a little bit of weight in law school. I'm a, a lawyer. So I had been losing weight and then I'd gone back up a little bit and she was getting ready for her wedding. And so the two of us teamed up and we had just long conversations about the way that our society often encourages overeating and, um, and encourages this really unhealthy diet. And we wanted to partner together to um, create our own, c- kind of make decisions for ourselves about what was going in our bodies and really take control of that and not walk into a party and feel like we had to always eat what everyone else was eating. Um, And that partnership of her and I working together was um, actually uh, the beginning of a class that we then taught our friends that we called Lighter. Um, So she was a teacher at Teach for America. I was, um, I later became a professor. So we both loved teaching. And once we had done this and, started to understand more how to reject the standard American diet, how to reject a culture of overeating, but how to do it in a way that's not about um, yelling at yourself, but is about nourishing your body and celebrating healthy food. Um, We made it into an eight-week class for our friends, just our girlfriends. And um, they all lost a lot of weight, and and, um, we called it lighter. And that was years before I started the real lighter, but it was it was kind of the the kernel, the kernel. And what what were some of the things that you talked about in that class? You know, what were sort of the tenets or the the pillars or whatever? Yeah. So I mean, I think globally, it was it was restructuring the way we look at the way Americans eat and taking it more from a cultural perspective. I think when we do that. We, we can um, 
we can turn the conversation about it just being about us and our own individual struggle and bring it into a, a conversation about how the way we eat in this country is just so messed up and how do we be participants in this culture um, without taking part in that part of it. Um, because a lot of us do have a general understanding that in general we should be eating more fruits and vegetables, less processed foods. Um, I don't know if Americans know we should be eating fewer animal products because I think that um, that's newer information that we're all just becoming aware of with more research. Um, but generally people know that and, and I think a lot of people's struggle is that resistance to um, the, the current towards overconsumption that we have in this country of unhealthy processed foods. So a lot of it was around that. How to, it, everything started how to talk to family and friends about the change first. And I'll tell you a quick story from that, which was a beautiful story. We had one woman in the class who had always been skinny. Um, her whole life just had a high metabolism, God bless her. And, <laughs> and um, she had always been skinny and then she got together with her husband who had always been heavy he was, and he was really heavy. Um, and they shared food together. That was a big part of their relationship was cooking and they were, they called themselves foodies and she had gained a ton of weight. So by the time she got married, she was really heavy with him. And so when she came into this class, it, part of it was saying, making her making the commitment that she wanted to lose the weight. This was not her. It didn't feel like her. And so she went to her husband kind of with our support and said, I, I'm, I'm going to eat plant-based. The, the class was teaching also plant-based eating. I'm going to go plant-based so that I can um, lose weight. And um, he cried when she told him that because he felt he felt rejected. Um, and we had to support her for two weeks where she really experienced some um, issues in the marriage because – uh, it wasn't about her, obviously. It was about him and his own struggle within himself. Um, and we had to help her see that this was not about her. This was about him. And that their relationship could survive a shift in that they used to be bonded over food in an unhealthy way. But maybe someday they could be bonded over food in a healthy way. Um, and so she stuck with that change and we kind of like helped her stay strong through that and then eventually he came around and then they went plant-based together and he lost 50 pounds and this is now many years later and I see pictures of them on Facebook all the time and they have kids and they're all really lean and they're thriving on a on a plant-based diet which is kind of the best outcome possible so that's awesome yeah sometimes yeah. whenever you start to make positive decisions other people around you kind of they realize maybe that the, their own decisions aren't as positive and feel a little uh, intimidated or whatever, you know? Definitely. It's Definitely. A, it's tough. Yeah. So so what did what has happened in your life, uh, you know, that surprised you over the last six years? You've lost the weight. You said you, you know, you, you're skinnier than you've ever been since you were 24 or something like that. But what, is there anything about this journey that has surprised you that you just didn't anticipate? Well... If you had asked me five years ago, what are the three areas of work that you would never, ever, ever do? So I was a, I was a lawyer and in high school I thought about being a philosophy major. I, I became an environmental studies major, but, um, and I went to law school to work on environmental issues and, and animal issues. So if you had asked me five years ago, what are the three areas of work you'd never get into? I would have said tech, finance, and healthcare. I, I thought I would have seen no path to doing those things. And I am now the CEO of a tech company doing healthcare. <laughs> so to answer your question, everything. Like Everything is different. And I think that that is one of the most exciting things about igniting a journey and, and learning to take a leap. When I made the decision to 
split with the status quo and go to a plant-based diet, um, I took a divergent path. And I think that was one of the first steps to doing things that scare you a little bit, but also kind of get you excited and make you think maybe, oh, I did that. Maybe I can now do this. And now maybe I could do this. And all of a sudden, your life just looks totally different. I, um, I'm sure it started in that, in that place when I split with the status quo and the way I eat. But now I'm the chief empowerment officer for an amazing company called Lighter. Um, I, uh, after Lighter, the class happened, I always thought about it in the back of my mind, but years went by and I um, didn't do anything with it. And Jess, my friend, never did anything with it. And then um, I was in politics trying to work on food policy stuff and it was just going so slow. And I was seeing how software companies were disrupting major parts of our lives. So you have Airbnb disrupting the hotel industry. You have Uber disrupting the cab industry. Um, and just software in general is you know, changing our world. And I knew nothing about software except that it changes the world quickly. And um, met my incredible co-founder, Micah Risk. Uh, Micah is a nutritionist um, and a celebrated athlete. She's been on the cover of Runner's World twice. Um, and when we met, I thought, well, maybe maybe we could start a software company um, that could help people eat better. Um, maybe we can take what I learned in that class that where we were teaching later and what I've learned over all of the years that I've been plant-based um, and all of the things that Micah knows about how to help somebody go plant-based because she's done a lot of work in behavior change and with public health research. Um, and maybe there's a way that we can use software to help people eat better. And we met for coffee. She didn't know that I was going to pitch her a company. We had never met before. Uh, and the story goes that I proposed business and she said yes. <laughs> And uh, we've talked almost every single day since then, and that was about four years ago. So. That's awesome. And we're kind of uh, thinking about slash plotting slash figuring out how maybe what you guys are doing can help the people that I'm, I'm you know, are listening to what we're doing and, and hopefully the people that watch the film. So I'm excited to, to learn more and, and see more about what you guys have going on. Um, you know, if you could have a conversation with somebody who's at the beginning of this journey, who's ready to take that step... Um, whether it's for weight reasons or health reasons or environmental reasons, what would you tell somebody who's at the beginning of this journey? Oh, first, be nice to yourself. I think that, I think it is so important to um, be compassionate with yourself as you start the journey because um, it's it, for some people it does happen overnight, really fast, and those stories are really exciting. Um, but for a lot of us, it happens over time. And a lot of times that means it's sustainable change, which is great. Um, so celebrate, celebrate, celebrate every little victory. And for the times when you mess up a little bit, like just that's part of life. It's totally okay. And then the, so that's first is to be kind to yourself. Second is to find your people. So, um, if you, however you can find people and, and Jason, maybe you have some suggestions for how they can do that, you know, find your support group, find people who are also on the journey, find people who have already gone through it. And then recognize that there are going to be people in your life who will not support the journey right away. And it's not about you. It's about them. Um, but if you have been bonding a lot over food, if you have traditions like where it's the fall, um, I'm a Patriots fan and we just lost terribly last night. But, you know, so if you have football and you're used to eating wings and fries and all that stuff and, and you're hesitant to give it up, just know that there's usually alternatives to all of those comfort foods that, um, that you can make and that you can share with people and that rejecting somebody's food is not necessarily rejecting them. It's just saying, no, thank you. You're taking control over your, what goes into your body. Um, and I think really understanding my, my job title is chief empowerment officer, but really being conscious that this decision is empowering you to make decisions about what food's going into your body, not your partner, not your parents, not 
uh, society at large, not the advertisers that are trying to sell you terrible food. Like you get to decide what goes into your body. And, um, and that's the beauty of this first step is it's you taking control over your life. And just like you asked me before, that, that initial step of making that decision, I'm, I'm going to do things a little differently than I did before. I want to control how my life goes. That is an opening to all kinds of goodness. So celebrate every time you make that decision for yourself. And don't get mad at yourself too much when you when you can't always do be perfect. Yeah, and if anybody's a football person and they love uh, chicken wings, uh, email me. I have a great uh, buffalo yeah. cauliflower wing recipe from Veggies yeah. for Dinner and Fat Man Rants. Um, and then, you know, if you could go back in time and have a conversation with yourself before all this started, you know, um, and and have some maybe some kind words to yourself or some encouraging words to yourself, mm. what would those be? Oh, I would love to take a time machine and sit down with Alexis senior year after she got her photo back and was not very happy with the way I looked in it. Uh, and just say that every experience is important, that if I hadn't been heavy, maybe I wouldn't be where I am now. And I'm so grateful for where I am now that... Um, that it's all good and maybe some things are hard but this journey that you're about to go on is going to be incredible and it's going to be so revealing and change is awesome don't be afraid of it just leap um and like get ready for quite an adventure <laughs> and have fun like enjoy the journey don't don't be so much in a rush to be done because it's kind of never done. There's never really a finish line. It's all learning. Um, and it's, and it's all about kind of evolving your relationship with yourself and the world around you. All good. That's great. Well, and then lastly, where can people uh, connect, find out what you have going on and maybe even find out a little bit about lighter. Sure. So, uh, you can find lighter on Facebook lighter culture on Facebook and then we also have a site lighter.world because software has now been used in over 130 countries so we're lighter.world that's awesome well uh, thanks so much for the time and I'll look forward to keeping up with you and hopefully plotting some more things and uh, I, uh, I appreciate the time and sharing about your journey well I appreciate so much of what you're doing you're inspiring so many people and I hope you're feeling really good about it because it's exciting. Thanks so much. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.